Hi everybody, this is part 8 of my blown engine video series. In this part we continue reconnecting the engine. Now it's time for some non-fun uh, wiring and uh, buttoning upping activities. First we'll reconnect this one. This is the one I always forget, so boys and girls don't forget that one. Let's do the thermostat next. Make sure when we put the thermostat back in, the weep holes on the top and the thermostat-y part is on the inside. It's easy to do when there's nothing on the front of the car. Slave cylinder. You want When you compress it, you want to try to make sure that you don't get the uh, piston cockeyed in here or it could start leaking. Why don't you go step on the clutch pedal and we'll see what happens. There you go. So, yep, it's working great. Let's put the fuel rail on. I had this plugged in but not connected to the intake manifold to te oh, test the fuel pump and it shot one of the injectors halfway across the room. Make sure to plug them in in the right order. You notice how nothing's labeled? You can kind of tell by how the wires are hanging. What does that go to? Oh, that goes here. This goes there. That's, that's what causes the car to start. This one goes here, but looks like the clip is missing. And that one goes right there, so this all goes like, like that. This is the part that I do not like, is this one right here. I hate this thing. This is my least favorite part of the entire car. It's got these little, it's just got lots of little bits flopping around and you gotta push hard and everything, it, it just sucks. Mm -hmm. And this one goes under like that. And then, I think I got everything. I don't wanna put it on too early because I don't wanna take it back off again. Yeah, this one presses on like that. Oh yeah, we gotta put the horn on too. Mm. And then the throttle body goes here. Throttle body's got another wacky connector that's gotta go through all this stuff. See, so it goes like that, so. Kinda squeeze them together at the same time. I used to try to do this without doing this horn, but I've discovered that it's easier. It's easier if you take the horn off. And for some reason, I have no idea. These bolts are 11 millimeter. They're the only 11 millimeter bolts I've found on the car. Get the mass airflow sensor back in place speed things up. I'm under a time budget here. Which one goes where? That goes there. And this one goes... So that's the top hose. Put the bottom hose on. It's starting to look like an engine. <laughs> yeah. We are making some progress here on the top, at least. And I like doing, I like working on the top because it looks like it's done, but it, then you go underneath and there's still like an hour of work. I still got the axles. I got to put the gear oil in and all that stuff. We'll change the dipstick O-ring while we're here. There we go. I'm going to take off the oil cap so I don't forget to put oil in the motor. Our air conditioning compressor, why doesn't it reach? Oh, there we go. Then we can put the belt back on. Yep. 
nice and clean. That goes to the throttle body right here. Don't forget to plug this one or the car won't start. Okay, belt time. Where's my belt? There it is. <laughs> Look what I forgot. I just realized I forgot to put the oil sump pickup in. So we're taking the oil pan off and putting that in. That's what happens when you hurry. This is exactly why I did not want to be working on the engine and putting it in two days before track day. I have to take the oil pan off. Yeah, so. Yeah, that would have, well, the oil light would have come on and I would have just stopped the car. Yeah. put this guy in here. Good thing I noticed. Okay, oil pan back on. While I'm under here, I'm going to put the axle back in. There we go. We'll put in the bolts for the drive shaft carrier bearing. Let's put the other axle in while we're while we're at this. There it goes. All right, now we can put the suspension back in place because we got the axles in. Jeez. All right, belt time. I'm really good at putting belts on these cars now. belts on. All right, before putting the exhaust back in, I need to put the heat shield back over the starter motor. And uh, I need to reconnect the hoses that go to the uh, oil cooler recirculator. It's kind of a tight fit. Let's see how well I can get these oil recirculator hoses back on. There's one. The second one's going to be a little tough. Really tight in here for the second one. There we go. Finally. All right, now we'll put the heat shield back on. I hate this part. Let's put the dog bone back in and the power steering fan. Now I'll add gear oil to the transmission. So I've got a cool little trick. I drill a hole in the cap and put a hose on it and then I punch a little hole in the side of the bottle and I squirt compressed air into the hole and that forces the uh, fluid all the way into the transmission faster than if I just drain it in and hopefully with less mess. The only, the only thing you have to watch out for is be sure to dial down the regulator on your air compressor so you don't explode the bottle. 20 PSI works pretty good. So I just stick the hose into the fill hole. Then I put air into the bottle. Empty. Way faster than if I tried to drip it in. It should take a total of about 1.7 liters or so. 
And when it's full, it'll just kind of drip out of the hole. So I'm going to keep a towel ready to catch that. And also have the fuel plug ready to plug it real quick. All right, that's a good break point for now. I need to go eat dinner, and I'm tired. It's uh, 8 o'clock. Tomorrow is, uh, I'm going to be tuning the car and breaking it in. But I'll just stop here for now and uh, go get some food and come back and finish building it. Sorry to keep dragging you guys along, but that's all for part eight. In part nine, I'll finally get the car started. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.